yeah, just pain. It was pain everywhere. Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon Perna, and we made it through our first NFL Sunday of football. Well, most of us rest in peace to the Cowboys' playoff hopes, which are now lower than the Falcons' chances of holding on to a lead. Today, I want to highlight some of the key things that went down on Sunday. Everything from safety Justin Reed kicking PATs to Michael Thomas reintroducing himself to the world while Carson Wentz's surprise performance shocked us all and the classless Cowboys fans booing Dak Prescott who left the field with a serious wrist injury. Dak will not be able to pleasure himself with his dominant hand for four to eight weeks, and Le'Veon Bell lands a knockout punch heard nowhere. That's good sports. Please, this is your chance to unsubscribe. Today's episode is sponsored by Upside. Upside is not just something every major sports network doesn't see in me, it's an app built to literally give you money back for your purchases. To me, Upside made sense because why wouldn't I get money back for purchases I already have to make? Last year I bought a gas guzzling full size truck because traveling with a kid requires a ton of room for all the stuff you have to pack. What I didn't see coming was inflation and extremely high gas prices. The only thing that made me not lose my mind when I saw the pump price hit three figures was knowing I was earning uh, cash back with Upside. You can use Upside when buying gas or groceries or eating at restaurants. Download the free Upside app in the App Store or on Google Play and use my code GOODSPORTS and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. All you do is check in at the business, pay as usual with a credit or debit card, and get paid once you're linked up with Upside. You can cash out anytime to your bank, PayPal, or with an e-gift card. Just use my code or the link below to get started, which in and of itself is an upside. Now you may have missed it, but former NFL running back Le'Veon Bell and former NFL running back Adrian Peterson squared off in a boxing match that Nobody watched or attended. Just 200 tickets were sold to Bell vs. Peterson, and apparently over a thousand tickets were given away last minute. That said, Bell TKO'd AP, something uh, AP's kids have been waiting years to do to him. So never say Le'Veon Bell didn't do anything for the kids. And if I could make uh, miracles happen, I would have paid all of your Super Chat money to see Mike Tyson punch Robert Kraft like he did to that idiot on that airplane after Kraft kept asking him if he wanted to go and get a massage after the game. Okay, on to real Sunday happenings. Uh, most teams, if they lost their kicker, would be fucked. Not the Chiefs. Not the damn <laughs> Chiefs! Uh, safety Justin Reed stepped in and successfully blasted a point after attempt uh, after Harrison Butker rolled his ankle like a joint. My eye, shirt's below. Reed came in as the backup kicker. Now Reed did this during the preseason, but to do this in a real game is quite impressive. Although someone should have told the Cardinals that this was a real game and no longer the preseason. Butker eventually returned, but Reed kept doing kickoff duties and every single one of his kicks went for touchbacks. Uh, the Chiefs scored a shit ton of points, so I'm assuming his leg might be more sore than uh, whoever Josh Allen stiff-armed all the way back on Thursday. Jameis Winston is a walking soundbite. This was Winston uh, when he was asked where he was feeling pain after his uh, injury in victory over the Falcons. Where was the pain, Jameis? Yeah, just pain. It was pain everywhere. So we got to keep on pushing. Falcons were asked the same question. Their response would have been choking. Choking everywhere. <laughs> Atlanta continues to be the least 
safest city on earth for a lead, up 26 to 10 in the fourth quarter, and they lose 27 to 26. The Falcons are like a weird sexual experience. It's very hard to determine who's coming, who's not. And every opponent they face is definitely coming from behind. Now Taysom Hill had some big plays. Jarvis Landry was the unhung hero in my opinion in this game. Had a huge catch that set up the game winning uh, field goal. But damn, Jameis Winston and Michael Thomas in the fourth quarter were unstoppable. Mr. Slant Route only had two impressive touchdown grabs and two key catches to set up sec the second touchdown. Four of his five catches all came in the fourth quarter while the comeback Jameis orchestrated was perfect. Uh, this offseason, three massive wide receiver trades went down. Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, and A.J. Brown. After one week, my power rankings list for that trio is number three, Tyreek Hill, number two, Devontae Adams, and number one, A.J. Brown. Don't get me wrong, Devontae Adams was good, but A.J. Brown was the difference maker for the Eagles offense, and as it stands, he produced the second most receiving yards week one at a buck 55. Trailing, of course, only Justin Jefferson. A.J. Brown is that guy. And like a true champion, he floats like a butterfly and gets stung by a bee. 155 receiving yards just days after getting stung by a bee, which required an EpiPen shot. Philly also put up over 200 rushing yards, so they may be tough for any team to beat, not just the Lions. The surprise rookie week one had to be Commander's Jahan Dotson. 66.6% .6 of his receptions were touchdowns, and 100% of them were game winners. Two TDs on three receptions for the rook, Carson Wentz, who I've been critical of here from time to time, finally filled the hole left by Kirk Cousins' departure at the QB position. Sure, there are still multiple holes left by Dan Snyder's legacy, but one patch at a time, Washington. Wentz was the first Washington QB since Billy Kramer in 1975 to throw four TDs in a season opener. And yes, the first to throw four in a game since... You like that? You like that? In 2015. Now, Wentz also had two interceptions, and had to lead a come from behind win in a game that I think Washington should have dominated. Now through his first 50 starts, Lamar Jackson has as many wins as one Tom Brady. Brady, of course, still has more thousand yard rushing seasons than Lamar Jackson, so hopefully Lamar can add that to his toolkit. Lamar just turned down a massive contract offer from the Ravens that had over 130 million guaranteed, more than Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray. And with those wins, he actually still has the leverage there. So go get him, Lamar. Congratulations to Justin Fields for being the only second year QB taken in the first round to get a win this week. Hell, even Davis Mills had to settle for a tie. The wettest game of the week did give us a low key revenge touchdown from Dante Pettis. And uh, I broke down the towel penalty yesterday in a separate video. And my favorite achievement from week one was watching the AFC South go winless while two AFC South teams played each other. Lovey Smith electing for a tie after Rodrigo Blankenship missed a game winner in OT gave us the stat of the week. Now I already broke down the Bengals Steelers game here so you can check that video out too. Uh, I do love seeing Mike Tomlin doing the AB put that shit on dance after the Steelers unlikely victory. And that is the weirdest sentence I will say this week. Mike Tomlin was doing the AB put that shit on dance and Antonio Brown, as a fashion model, has turned the comedy classic Zoolander into a fashion documentary as AB channels his inner derelict. Derelict! It is a fashion, a way of life inspired by the very homeless, the vagrants, the, the crack whores that make this wonderful city so unique. Uh, when the parody of what you're wearing isn't as dumb as what you're actually wearing, you've gone too far. Mike Tomlin, though, uh, might come out and do a full two-minute choreographed dance to an Antonio Brown song after learning that T.J. Watt may have only suffered a partial tear in his pec 
and that he could be back after resting for a month or so. Watt's getting more tests done and opinions to see if this injury can be rehabbed or if it will require surgery, which would put him out for the season. Now, the only revenge story from week one that seemed to go the way of the scorned was Zadarius Smith, who had a sack and a hilarious moment with Aaron Rodgers, who tried to block Smith. Now, the Packers are gonna need some time to get their offense in sync. The young receivers have to step up and stop dropping passes, and some combination of production needs to emerge to replace Devontae Adams, who did have more receiving yards, 141 in his debut as a Raider than all of the Packers receivers combined, who had 95. Uh, I guess Khalil Mack also had a successful re revenge game against the Raiders, but he's already played against his former team. His three sacks were impressive, but I think that's more of an indication that the Raiders have some serious issues on offensive line. They gave up 22 pressures on Sunday, a real recipe for disaster, and of course did not win. Uh, not every pass Justin Herbert makes is a head turner, but shit, there a lot of them are. <laughs> a lot of them are. <laughs> the Chargers, uh, I think will have more luck covering guys like Devontae Adams, who did torture him, when J.C. Jackson returns to their secondary. The clear-cut week one game wrecker, though, was receiver Justin Jefferson. He was the only 100-plus yard receiver to score two touchdowns. He led the league so far with 184 receiving yards and made my Offensive Player of the Year prediction look pretty damn good. Now, if I had to hand out my Big Dick Player Award this week, it would go to new Giants head coach Brian Dable. Dable injected the Giants with life. Saquon Barkley, he's a stud again. 194 total yards and a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Dable and the Giants with the game on the line dial up back-to-back -back Daniel Jones runs on third and three, and then again on fourth and one. They convert the fourth, they score the touchdown, and down one point, Dable opts for the win and gives gives the rock to Saquon Barkley, who powers his way for the two-point conversion and the Giants' first winning record in six years. Yes, six years. It's the first time they've been over 500 and one Sean Morish acted appropriately. Holy fucking shit, my eyes! Finally, let him fucking open up. Also acting appropriately was Brian Dable in the locker room after the win, showing that a Middle-aged white guy has some rhythm. I may be getting old, but the song he and the Giants are dancing to here just sounds like a bunch of guys talking to me. I can't imagine uh, seeing some of the former Giant coaches doing that. And finally, Dak and the boys. The last time the Cowboys scored less than six points in a season opener was in 1989, the debut of one Troy Aikman. So I will take Dak's injury as a sign that the Cowboys are about to win three of four Super Bowls. You're welcome, Scooter. Now, Dak fractured his right thumb, which will require surgery and at least uh, four to six to eight weeks to heal. The Cowboys looked pretty anemic on offense all game and Dak was not playing well. I saw CeeDee Lamb drop a key pass and Dak was a bit off target all game. And now the Cowboys will have to rely on Cooper Rush to carry them all the way to Mike McCarthy's mid-season firing. I did see the video of Cowboys fans booing Dak. And even one douche throwing trash at Dak as he walked off the field. Now it was funny when Cowboys fans threw trash at the NFL officials after the Cowboys lost in the wildcard round. And that's because the referees are not, uh, how you say, people. Just AI created by Roger Goodell in his lab to piss us all off. Although some might argue this is karma for Dak, who defended the fans throwing the garbage at the refs last season. If it were just the trash, you could use the few bad apples argument. But since Dak was getting booed, it is a big part of the orchard that should be hanging their heads in shame today. When your QB is heading to the tunnel during a game, it means he's hurt or taking a shit. But we should boo no man for either, okay? No booing a man for pooping. It's crazy that we didn't even get through uh, week one before the first team became QB needy. 
Had the 49ers waited just a couple weeks, maybe they could have traded Jimmy G to Dallas. If I'm Jerry Jones, I make the difficult call to the Philadelphia Eagles and inquire about Gardner Minshew. Think about that. Gardner Minshew, America's most beloved QB, going to America's most loathed football team. The Cowboys feel like last year's Baltimore Ravens. The all-injury team just one week into the season. Dax out, Tyron Smith's out, then Connor McGovern sprains his ankle, J. Ron Kirst suffers a knee injury, uh, none hurting as bad as Jerry Jones' ego. But it may be a while before the Cowboys look good again. Yet NFL memes will still be posting the dumbest Cowboy jokes out there and getting hundreds of thousands of likes. Fuck me. Thanks for watching the NFL Week 1 Recap. Uh, I will be streaming the Broncos game tonight and come back tomorrow for a new video. Uh, maybe a little something different. A little something different for week one and week two if it does well.